We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we're talking about is your plate low vibration? To join me in the G-spot that is guest spotlight, I have the incredible, the phenomenal Ingrid S. Clay. She is the founder of ISC Wellness, all right? She's doing big things. She is an author, fitness expert, and chef. So round of applause, the crowd goes wild. Uh, This is one of my dear friends, but also she's worked with me at the Spicy Life in coaching, and then she's also coached me. So this is my fitness coach. This is going to be a whole episode about fitness, food, and all of the things, lifestyle that makes you healthy or unhealthy. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my health journey and uh, getting insight from you, Ingrid, on your expertise and how you have been able to help me, but then also how can others help themselves? So you may be familiar with this question because you're a supporter and you've been on the uh, the podcast before, but you get to first share your story of when you first fell in love with yourself. What was that moment? You have to define the moment. Where were you at? What were you doing? Who are you with? And you were like, damn, I'm freaking incredible. I love me. Oh boy. <laughs> it's heavy. We're starting off heavy, Okay. I should have gotten the questions ahead of time from my publicist. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <laughs> just rolling with it. Um, the first time I fell in love with myself, I mean, there's different points throughout my life where I fell in love with myself at different points. So mm. that's kind of like, um, you know, there's a few different times. I think that uh, maybe the time that I remember the most are where I, I kind of knew, like, this is it, the kind of thing. Yeah. Was, um, y- it was a little bit um, after my divorce. I remember mm. I was training for my first show and I didn't really um, pay close attention to what my body was doing. Mm. I was just kind of going through all the motions, but I was probably using it more for kind of like um, just the mental clarity. Yeah. And it was very healing for me. Mm. And it wasn't until like, kind of like after that period, I remember my coach was like, wow, you look great. And I was like, what? And I actually looked in the mirror for mm. the first time and saw myself. And it's not so much saw what my body looked like, yeah. but saw myself. Mm. Like how I came through that kind of like difficult period and, um, you know, was kind of like reintroduced myself to me. Yeah. Kind of thing. So I would say probably that time. I love that. Do you feel like uh, you used fitness during that time period Um, to kind of medicate and distract yourself from maybe some of the challenges you were going through? Um, It was the only thing I could control. Mm. So that's what I used it for initially. Um, Kind of like in conjunction with that, I was learning how to meditate though. So I kind of just started meditating on the treadmill which was how do we meditate on the treadmill so is it like i mean it's just, <laughs> am i how am i tapping into my chakras while i'm running like what am i doing what does that look like <laughs> i mean i guess it's similar to a walking meditation but uh-uh. it's a running meditation so i really just focus on the breath and like kind of like the same way you would in meditation you just focus on the breath like the treadmill would just stop and yeah I'm like oh an hour passed and you know and i just i didn't realize it because i was like kind of like in the zone, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, it's kind of um, akin to athletes when they're playing and they're like, I don't remember it because I was so present. And yeah. I was so in the zone. It's a form of meditation. I love that you were doing uh, meditating with cardio at the same time. Uh, <laughs> that's masterful. Okay. Um, and I do feel like you do so much that embodies, right? I feel like it's a lifestyle because you cook Plus you do the fitness. Um, I think that it's it's a, this merger, right? And I think that I can attribute a lot of my weight loss and success to losing that baby weight mm-hmm. to you. Even prepare me to get pregnant. I remember um, coming at you and saying like, okay, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's harder for me to lose weight. I want to make sure that I can get pregnant and we decided we would lose 10 pounds for health. You help me get there. Boom. I lose those 10 pounds and I get pregnant. <laughs> right when we lost. <laughs> right when we. Yeah. But I mean, that was the goal. But it was like, dang it. Right. I, was, I was looking real No snatched. time to show off. <laughs> then um, I start to see my body transform and I start to 
have, which I always have had, a tumultuous relationship with food plus uh, what I have based on my research, right? Self-diagnosed body image dysmorphia, where what I see in the mirror is uh, far more overweight or unattractive than what actually exists, right? To give you guys a little context, this started when I was younger with coming from a household or family lineage where uh, beauty was celebrated um, by the women in my household. But then in my family's adulthood, you seeing the women struggle with health and fitness and become obese, therefore disrupting what they've been celebrating. Um, and some of that could be in result to relationship with men. A lot, a lot of the women in my family have been um, in toxic relationships with men, remarried multiple times, right? It's also what propelled my purpose in life. But back to the food, my mom was in relationship with my stepdad who was an alcoholic. And uh, in order to, by my silence, as I would say, uh, for the six pack that he was buying behind my mom's back, he would reward me with Snickers or Twix mm. or ice cream or Reese's caramellos all y'all know these delicious candies okay these are still some of my favorites still these days <laughs> i eat the chocolate and um not only would i get one but i would get a few to take home and like sneak in my little drawer like it was a thing where i was looking forward to my candy bars every day because we would always walk across the street to go to the grocery store to get his six pack and so um i looked at food as a reward system mm. for good behavior um, and it wasn't until I got braces and couldn't eat the junk food and lost the weight that I started to see that the way people treat you changes based on your weight. So I started associating it now as like, oh, when I'm fit, I'm treated better. When I'm fat, because they used to call me fat girl or mozzarella sticks or anything that they can. Yeah, because uh, it's cheese and my name has an M. I don't know how they made that association. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pie face. I've heard it all. OK. But that was what set me down, I think, or propelled me towards this um, consciousness around my weight. So then getting pregnant, that was very hard. And I feel like you were one of the most instrumental people in telling me that I can do it, telling me that I'm still beautiful and telling me that it will be OK to gain this additional weight. And while it has affected every woman in my family with not being able to lose it, that that didn't have to be my story. Mm -hmm. I think you're masterful when it comes to the um, spiritual support and the mindset coaching that a lot of coaches don't necessarily know they need to pour into their clients. I think oftentimes it's very much about like what's in and out, right? Calories burned versus like what's consumed versus like, oh no, there's actual a psychology to this. There's actual uh, emotional management. Um, in addition to the workouts that support <laughs> the rest of the right. above, um, where can you give us a little background on your training and how you merge all these things together to make uh, your business? Um, well, the, that's a lot to. Um, I know, I know. I gave a lot. I gave a lot. Okay. <laughs> Let me first start by saying. You know, I, I talk about this in one of my ebooks, the mindfulness one, where food is the tapestry of our lives. Mm. If you think about any moment in your life, there was food involved, whether that was a birthday cake, whether that was a graduation dinner, like it's always been a through line, a through line throughout our lives. Yes. Whether we are given our favorite cupcake when we're sad or given our favorite pizza when we're happy. Yes. Like it's always been a part of it. You know, soul food. Who's bringing the who's bringing holidays? This? Who's yep. bringing that? So it's something that, you know, has always been used as kind of like comfort and a bandage. Mm. So that's very common in, a, you know, a lot of households, especially like you know, black and brown households. Yep. And most of the time, the, it's not the healthiest. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time. Right? So I'll just start by saying that. <laughs> um, um, where the connection came for me actually came from physics. Because mm. my background started off yep. with physics. Yep. And physics is all about energy. And so when, you know, as I was just reading and growing up and working, it's energy has always kind of been at the forefront of mm. my mind. And when we start to hear things, and we hear it all the time, thoughts become things. Yep. So your thoughts about your body are things. Mm -hmm. So the more you think bad things about your body, the more your body will give you exactly what you're thinking. Mm. So again, it's energy. But if you start to think 
good things. And it, it may be a far reach to be like, I look hot when you don't <laughs> feel that way. Right. So the, the reach is I'm getting better. Yep. Or, you know, I can see a small change. Yeah. You know, or I tried today. Yep. Or I worked out today. So I always tell people that they should, one, start where they are and be realistic about where they are. Yeah. You know, just kind of like your coaching. Be realistic about yep. where you are. I can't look in the mirror and be like, I'm hot today. That's just not going to work. <laughs> it's not believable. Especially if I don't feel that, yes. <laughs> it's not believable. But I can look in the mirror and say that I worked out today and that's one step forward. Yeah. So I do believe the thoughts we have about ourselves is di directly reflected in our body. For sure. So that's kind of where my coaching style comes from. So I don't really allow any bad talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. This is true. <laughs> this is true. And I don't see you that way. So I see you exactly how you want to be. So I don't mm. even understand that concept when people grab stuff and say stuff. Yeah. I, it, I, it's hard for me to even kind of like relate to that because mm -hmm. I don't see it. And then the other part of that is that that's that's who you were yesterday. Mm. That's not who you were. After, that's not who you are after this workout. Yeah. That's not who you're going to be after the second workout. So who cares yep. about yesterday? Yeah. Like it, it doesn't even exist anymore. Like we're here. Yeah. And we just finished a workout. We're a whole nother person. Yep. And it's a big deal. And I think when it comes to fitness and anything surrounding kind of like your body and how you feel about your body, those are the things that kind of give you those wins. Yeah. You know, and like the other thing I would say is, and I, I kind of talk about this a little bit in my book is food as a crutch. Mm. And so I give space in that mindfulness book to do journaling. And I have this, I have a lot of clients who are really struggling with um, cravings and addictions yeah. to do this. But there's a feeling that's always associated with the food. Like, why do you reach for the red velvet cupcakes? Mm. My grandma used to make them for me. And anytime I felt sad, I had those red yep. velvet. There's always a, th so it's to, the, the thing is to address the feeling, mm. address the emotion. So when you're feeling sad, write down that emotion, write down why you're feeling sad. And then we can stop that connection between the craving and the emotion. Yeah. You know what I mean? It sounds very, it's very mindful. I mean, you had me doing it, right? Which I, so what I loved about your approach was that it was very similar and I could speak the language and understand the why you had me doing some of this stuff. You guys, I, I had to, you guys, I had to report to her everything I was eating, like throughout the entire day, right? Similar to how I, after a date, I would make you give me highs and lows so that we could be mindful <laughs> of the good experiences, and, right. you know, red flags, green flags. And so I felt like that's what I was doing when I was having to text you like, this is how much salad dressing I'm putting on my salad, right? Like the mm -hmm. micro macro thing you were having me do. But like, um... With that, it made me, though, present with like, hmm, do I want to put this in my body right now and report that? So it was, <laughs> it was holding me accountable. Good, yeah, I, thought, I felt like it was very big on, you know, holding me accountable, which as a coach, I know I need coaching. I know the value of it because I know and I see the results with even my clients. So I buy into whether it's financial, whether it's health, we need the coaching. So I think that you're really extremely gifted and incredible at what you do. What do you think is the hardest part about what you do, though? I would say I don't I don't know if it's hard, but I guess it could be challenging is the, um, you know, and every everybody has it to a certain extent. But when your low self-esteem gets in the way of your productivity, mm. um, you know, because I, I, I see it a lot and it's so like just hard and because you know, you don't think you're changing, but I see that you're changing. Yeah. And then you're just like, I just can't do this anymore. You know, it's never going to work. Or, you know, the, the, um, again, the talking about mm -hmm. how you're not good enough or, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, so it's almost like a roadblock and it doesn't matter at, at a certain point. It won't matter what I say mm. because I can't work through that. That's a you thing. Yep. You know, <laughs> And for I, sure. Yeah. So it's kind of um, it, I would say it's it's challenging for me because I, I mean, I see so much potential and then it's like. I'm believing in you, you more than you're it. believing in yourself. Yeah. And it's like, come on, just do these steps and we will get there. But you got to do the steps. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I totally get that. Yeah. I think uh, what was extremely hard was, though, 
I didn't know I was going to gain so much weight with the yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I knew I was going to gain like 30 pounds. I didn't know I was gain like 50 to 55, 60. Um, and now having lost the weight though, and you help it. So when you trained me afterwards, I was feeling very defeated. I was 210 pounds after Princeton. And so having not seen myself like that, already struggling with body image and uh, loving food, like mm-hmm. I have a relationship with food and it is not the best relationship <laughs> Right. Because I do use it as a crutch. Um, Every breakup, I always turn to food. You know, whenever I was going through something, it would be like food was my coping. It was my reward Mm -hmm. or it just, you know, brought my spirits up. So after the baby, you putting me back on like this diet (laughs) and I'm like, damn. And I didn't even get to enjoy even the pregnancy really because I had got uh, gestational diabetes. So it was like, ah, so the negative conversations were like on overload with Mm -hmm. myself because I thought that I would be able to eat whatever I wanted. And that was not the case. Um, But what I appreciated was every time I did speak negative, you would always be there with the positive reinforcement on like, nope, that's not how we're going to talk to ourselves. Like, and I think, and I believe you saw me in my smaller self while I saw like Big spicy, you saw fit spicy. Yeah. So I think that that's extremely important that you have someone who does believe even when, you know, you you were challenged with those things. But do you ever feel like, nah, yeah, I'm not going to be able to help this person. I'm going to just tap out. Um, I've broken out with a lot of, a few clients. <laughs> <laughs> what do those breakups look like? I'm not the one for you. <laughs> you know, and sometimes I'm not like, and that's why I don't believe in competition in this space Yeah, because there's somebody for everybody and I may not be the one for you now. Yeah. Maybe you need someone else. Yeah. That cause whatever I'm doing is not working for mm-hmm. you and not working for us yeah because i i don't want to just train you for fun like i mean we have fun <laughs> it's not you it's me it's but <laughs> right but i want to see you reach your goals yeah so if we're training together for like a, a year and i don't see any changes we need to have a conversation what's going on yeah and if the conversation is like maybe i'm not the one for you then go find someone else you know and i've done that before and sometimes i've done it where i fired someone they got in gear mm. and they they, they they kind of like started up on their own when they need the breakup they needed the breakup mm-hmm. went through everything that I told them to do and was like calling me like okay girl I lost 10 pounds Take I'm ready back. to go <laughs> I'm ready to get serious and like and that's and that's perfect it was just like when you break up with a guy sometimes and you're like you're just Let not showing up for me <laughs> he got his shit together now and he's ready to go it is, it's the same thing and sometimes you just you everybody's not for everybody yep so um, sometimes it's good to have these convers- these conversations, even with clients. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not afraid to do that. But um, also, you mentioned something about being mindful when you eat. A lot of time, we mindlessly eat. Mm-hmm. So if you're sitting in front of the TV and eating, that's mindlessly eating. Oh, that's my eating. favorite thing to do, though. <laughs> that's Ingrid. mindlessly eating. Oh, that's, that's my <laughs> favorite thing to do in the world. You guys don't understand. That's how I get down. Like, that's how I relax. That's my recharge. I'm going to eat in front of the TV. I was a latchkey kid. I love TV. Yeah. I love, love, love TV. And I love, love, love food. So but, those are like a double bad com- combo. <laughs> but you don't know when you're full. When you eat I'm like full that. when I can't eat anymore. That's the- <laughs> <laughs> when my stomach's going to pop. That's when um, I'm full. Let me actually rephrase that. <laughs> you don't want to eat till you're full. You're only supposed to eat till you're not hungry. And a lot of times that we're mindlessly eating, we miss that cue. Yeah. And we go to where we're stuffed. And that's not a good look either. Facts. Yeah. And I enjoy partaking in libations. So, <laughs> so that coupled with, you know, alcohol, the calorie count, which you guys, I will tell you this though. I did not have one sip of alcohol while I was pregnant. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> I'm joking. So excited. <laughs> I know. As you, that's called being a good mom. Right. Yeah. No, but I think, I feel like that period was hard because I am a social drinker. So not, so it's like going to events and having experiences, but then not partaking. That was challenging for me, but now, um, with with your training, though, I am very cognizant of like, OK, do I do I need this? Do I want this? What is it serving? I am now in that mindset after you having coached me. But to today's topic, though, about, uh, you know, is is my plate low vibration? Um, that was first like went viral and, and, and made a joke about from, you know, a TikTok video that a, a wealth coach named Stormy had done with, I think, like her mentor. 
um what was tammy or something like that there was something someone like who that. yeah so who she was talking to one of her girlfriends yeah where her plate had like chicken wings and corn it had stuff on it that didn't necessarily look the most nutritious yeah. but she was reprimanding someone else's plate and had the same thing right so it looked somewhat hypocritical and i think that was like the backlash that she got but based on the food that i saw and me understanding that everything has energy even food that's what its point is to fuel us i was like well that is a low vibration plate can you explain though how a plate can be low vibration can you break that down for us i mean it goes back to energy it, you know it's, everything is energy um energy in equals energy out but i usually call them a beige plate so like if your <laughs> plate is mostly beige <laughs> which means what are beige foods what is that macaroni and cheese oh, pastas. um chicken uh beans rice these are all in the same color family so there's no veggies in there there's mm. no salad in there there's no color you want more rainbow there's no color right so if your plate is mostly beige we have a problem your mm. plate should not be 80 percent or 90 percent beige i decorate my tacos with uh, lots of lettuce <laughs> and green for that color so okay. if you cover up your beige <laughs> if you're covering up your beige <laughs> i can still see it no <laughs> Um, so, I mean, I, I will say like, how do you feel after you eat that? Oh, always guilty. Um, always bad. So <laughs> like, that's what lie. makes it low vibration. The, 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 so yes, my energy. Oh, whenever I eat anything bad, right. Even if it's just like, I earned this Cinnabon today. Right. Um, <laughs> I will be like, okay, since I earned this, right. Cause I told you, but it is my minor reward system. It was a long day. You know, my husband eat, is eating a sweet treat. I'm going to partake in a sweet treat. Afterwards, though, there's always this shame or guilt that takes over me. And in my, I guess, naivety or ignorance, I didn't understand the power that food had energetically over me. And now as a, you know, a more conscious eater, I'm like, do I want to feel that guilt or shame afterwards? Because I truly do know that it is bad for you. I can't make myself believe that it's good for you. I know the Cinnabon is bad for you. So me knowing that there's going to be a result afterwards that comes with shame and guilt. Now I will say, I probably don't need that. Let me do some sugar-free, fat-free yogurt, Greek yogurt. Um... <laughs> That Ingrid recommended, okay? I, will, I mean, I'm going to say, I mean, this is very convoluted because <laughs> because at the end of the day is energy. So if you eat something, you feel guilt. That is not good energy and that's Correct. a low vibrational thing. Correct. But if I want a donut and I'm using the word want, mm -hmm. not reward, not because I did good. I don't care Just about that stuff. Using want as a I want it. Okay. I'm going to eat it okay. and there's no guilt about it. So that's how do you not feel the guilt? I, I, I just don't have I've broken that relationship that food is going to hold something over me. I'm going to do what I feel good doing. Mm. Now, if I if I have a show or something to prepare for, we're not doing these things mm -hmm. because obviously there's a purpose involved, you know. But if I'm on it and I'm, I'm doing good and somebody goes to my favorite donut place, you're going to eat. I'm going to eat my donut. Am I going to eat five donuts? No. I mean, oh, so what about I mean, us who don't have self-control no. and we don't know portion control? Because I feel like that, that means you go in, let me, I go hard or go home. I'm not going to eat one donut. I'm going to eat five because I already broke the diet. I'm, a, I'm an extremist. So that's so me Got knowing it. that, being me being self-aware, I'm an extremist. Either I give it all up or I go all in. I'm the same with the relationship. I'm the same with uh, my coaching. If you're my client, we're going to go all in. Um, so it's it's me working with that dynamic while it is extreme and there should be balance. There should be balance. No, I'm going harder going home. So I right. do have to limit myself. And I think that goes back to like, and I'm going to say journaling, but why? Like finding out the real reason why you feel the need to have two or three. Like what, what are, what is that reasoning? What is that deeper meaning where you can't stop? Cause I broke, usually it's like I broke a promise to myself or I already decide I made a conscious decision to be naughty so if I'm going to be naughty I might as well reap all the instant gratification from that naughtiness so I, I'm rationalizing it I think as a I already messed up right so like if I if I start eating junk this food, I'm like I'm a not, guy that cheats. <laughs> yes. So if, I, if you cheat once in the morning, yes. you're like, I already cheated. So let me just continue the whole day of cheating. Yes. It's craziness. Yes. But you see how it doesn't. 
But it's also why I preach, even in dating, though, you need to be a disciplined person. It's mm-hmm. our lack of discipline why we will make excuses for wanting to be with multiple people. It's not, I'm an alpha male. We're hunters and gatherers and cavemen, and we should be able to have and partake in 20 women and marry five if we want. Get the F out of here. You lack self-control. You lack discipline. So Mm -hmm. you want to compare yourself to a beast, right? When Lord knows, an uneducated (laughs) beast, when Lord knows that we were put over the animals, right? If you're spiritual and you're a Bible book believer, right? Let's say Noah's Ark and, you know, Adam and Eve, if if, if you're a believer like me, did exist, right? Um, we were we were placed above and in control of them for a reason. But if we lack self control, then we are no different from the animals. And so the the rationalization is: I already stepped my foot in, got wet. I'm going to get in trouble anyways. Might as well, since I'm going to have to face the repercussions, mm-hmm. at least make this experience as enjoyable as possible. <laughs> which is why I will do ten Oreos instead of one Oreo. Real talk. Mm-hmm. I will eat the whole box. So, well, so because I know that about myself and I don't, I haven't trained myself to just do the taste thing. The taste thing has never worked for me. I've tried chewing it and spitting it out. That doesn't work for me because I'm like, well. <laughs> <That's> not, <laughs> this reminds me of the, of the marshmallow <laughs> test they did for the kids during COVID. Uh, I'm going to have to do that with you guys as an adult one. I'm going to praise some Oreo. <laughs> do only eat one. I'm going to walk away now. <laughs> see how many of you guys we have our weaknesses right like food is a weakness and it is so delicious but you're right because I don't like the way that I feel afterwards that does affect my energy if Mm -hmm. I can't show up the best for my lover or my children or if I'm not going to work out after I partake in this thing I know the guilt and shame that will come over me with it and that lowers my vibration vibration is Um, not just the sentiment and feelings that you're giving off, but what fuels you, right? So Mm -hmm. if you don't have the fuel or the energy because your mindset already talked you out, people can feel that. People can feel that connection to you or the lack of. And so just like in relationship and dating, if I tell myself, you know, all men suck and then I go out on a date, that guy's going to feel that energy because that's my sentiment and that's my body language and behavior now showing that belief, Mm -hmm. right? So I understand the mindset and the coaching behind the food, but because I have it masterfully mastered, um, (laughs) just tasting one, I refrain, (laughs) right? And I think that, I mean, I think that's fair, but I also think it's fair to explore why you can't just have one. Yes, and that's what I have you for. <laughs> <laughs> so that job, hello, has been put on you and my therapist, okay? <laughs> A girl needs help and she knows it. <laughs> I can't be excellent at all things. Like, let's just be realistic, okay? Time management and food and oh, staying on my a, workouts a lot to stay on will be of. my kryptonite. Look, I, I can excel in a lot of areas, but in those ones that I can't, I know, let me turn to people like you who I really respect, who I really admire, who have a um, tough love approach, but that also are aspirational, right? I, I, I can um, not only aspire to uh, operate like you in that area or try to get close, but then also you will pour back into me um, affirmation when I do have that negative talk. Like I understand the importance of your brilliance and like how you work. Do I disobey you sometimes? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, lots of times. Did I do it today? Hell to the yeah. Have I done it this whole month of December? Hell to the yeah. <laughs> I am not dieting right now. When I tell you like all that hard work to try- lose the baby weight only to corrupt myself in the month of December, because my husband said he wouldn't diet with me because it's the holidays and he's not going to limit himself. I was like, and that's a want. That's a desire. That was a very clear cut that he gave you. For sure. <laughs> and I rationalized me eating ratchet because my accountability partner wouldn't be in the house with me doing it. And mm. I know I will fall victim to temptation. So I've been buying Pillsbury Cinnabons and <laughs> making them. However, because of my extremeness I, in January, like most of the world who makes promises to themselves, I really will go ham. This is facts. Yes. I see a lot of that. I, I, so <laughs> let, let's talk about that. The new year, um, new me goals, right? I, I know you probably get a lot of that in your yeah. industry. The gym gets waves of people who come in and sign up for memberships. Mm-hmm. 
do you get excited top of the year for people to finally try to hit their weight loss and fitness goals? Or are you kind of like, they're lying to themselves. Here's another fad or effort that they're going to break. Um, it, it, to me, it's a fad. Okay. Just the beginning of the new year thing is a fad. But it depends on the person. It okay. could be a fad for you. Okay. Or you could actually put some purpose and meaning behind what you're doing. Um, so it really depends. <laughs> you don't believe in us. You have no faith in us. I, I can totally, see you're like, you guys I totally do better. believe in, uh, I mean, it's like, it's like anything that everybody does. Yeah. Everybody's not going to last. Yeah. You know, by the end of February, it's starting to trickle down. This is it true. It just is what it because is. Because Valentine's Day, there's so many sweets. Well, <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, or there's no Valentine's, so you stay in, <laughs> or, I don't know. Or you know, it reverses that yeah. way. But like, so that's the, that's the, the rule of it like everybody's not gonna you know not gonna follow through um and so there's only a handful of people that really really do mm. and so if you don't have anyone to like kind of push you whether that's like a friend that'll go work out with you yeah that you hold accountable whether that's an app that's like sending you text messages like where you been or whether that's a trainer who's like let's go yep. then it, it is more difficult yeah to kind of like hold on to that and the, the what makes it difficult is because people set unrealistic goals. True. And it just goes back to that. Like if you have never been working out five days a week, why would you set a goal <laughs> that you're going to work out five days a week? That's insane. You won't. Yeah. You can't. You That is a, setting yourself up to fail. Yeah. That is a very hard thing to sustain when you have not been doing it. That's true. And it's very unrealistic. If you have not been working out, at all, yeah. then your goal should be, I will work out for 30 minutes one time a week. If mm. you su- if you supersede that goal, well then congratulations. Yep. You've exceeded your goal. Yep. So now you know you can do two times a week if that's what you exceeded it to. Facts. And you stick to that and you maintain a consistency that you are working out twice a week. That is something that's realistic yeah. that you can actually finish and meet a goal. Yep. Like the, the goals are unrealistic. I mean, I don't eat like five times a week. I'm not even doing that. Like, that's, that's insanity. I don't even want to do it. Can, can I exploit you really quick? No. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean exploit? Please. Okay. Please, please, please. Um, I want people to see how you, how well you take care of your temple. I would like <laughs> you to, I would like you to stand up and show how well you take care of your temple. I mean. This, this tool. Please, 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 please. Okay, so can we see this snatched waist, you guys? Um, the abs uh, are popping. The, the, the breasts are supple and firm. And the arms. I can't do anything about your breasts. The arms. <laughs> not, not even the pectoral muscles. Can I mean, we do yeah. it? <laughs> The arms are sculpted. Can we just do a little turn? I'm so sorry to exploit you, but you look phenomenal. And the ass, the ass, you guys, when I tell you, um, Ingrid is delicious. The the thighs are luscious and fit. Um, You are a delicious friend. So so also my motivation is watching you when I work out or even liking what I'm looking at when I'm working out. Because if like, I I wasn't there yet, right? I, I wasn't, and I'm still not there, but... I wasn't um, satisfied with what I was with looking at. So I was like, well, at least I could look at that and say like, <laughs> okay, I got some eye candy in front of me. Let me just do one more set, even though it's kicking my ass. So I appreciate how well you take care of yourself because it's not like some of these, you know, IG fitness Herbalife fo- and no no offense to Herbalife. Um, <laughs> No offense, no. My hairdresser um, so, uh, sells Herbalife, and I I, I, I support um, Herbalife people. However, um, there are a lot of people who are repping products or repping uh, health things that they aren't really using or actually like pouring into their bodies, right? Or living the lifestyle that they're telling people to live, right? Right. So <laughs> you actually are. <laughs> You actually like are. I comment on these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really um, rep a, uh, a supplement. I don't really um, 
supplements are called supplement because they're supplementing something you're missing. Mm. And how do you know you're missing it unless you get tested? Mm. So I don't re- really believe in putting a whole bunch of stuff into your body unless you know for sure you need it. Yeah. Um, and then the other fold to that is that I like to do food first. So meaning get your supplements and get the things you need from your what you eat. Mm. Hence, fueling your body, yep. raising your vibration. Yep. So um, any kind of like junk in the system, like I feel like a lot of these products that are out, it's just like private labels slap a new brand on yeah. it. Um, they, they aren't raising your vibration. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's just fillers and junk. Uh, a girlfriend told me a long time ago that she had heard, and I want you to tell me if this is true or not, that if you are trying to lose weight or live a cleaner lifestyle, only eat around the outer rim of the grocery store. Do not go inside any aisles of the grocery store. Only eat on the outer rim of the grocery store because that is where the fruits and veggies and produce, um, fish, meats, and uh, milks and dairies are. The moment you start going down each aisle, it's either bagged, canned, um, Pro- dried, or processed. processed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that true? I mean, I would say that's a good rule of, rule of thumb. It sounds real to me because yeah. when I think about it, I was like, but I have to go down the aisles because that's where hot Cheetos are. <laughs> I'm just have some water. <laughs> hot Cheetos are a part of the five food groups now. <laughs> Cheetos don't have cheese in them. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you know, if it, if it comes in a bag or a box, I don't know, you might want to rethink it or read the ingredients. Um, a lot of things that we can make at home. Yeah. And, you know, I <laughs> have a friend that says all the time, oh, you can make that. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, and yeah, you can. Like almond butter. Yeah, you but can. But you like make almond milk. I'm like, who's, yeah. making almond? who's churning their own butter? It takes two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh, my God. Your homemade um, uh, salad dressing, though, is really good. That's like my favorite now. I make it all the time. Thank you. To the point now, I'll order out like food and stuff like that. And um, I won't use their salad dressing that they supply me with. I'll just make your recipe. It really is yummy. I should definitely probably sell that. Yes. <laughs> you should <laughs> bottle it up and sell it. You should Coming definitely sell soon. it. <laughs> How is it to date you, Ingrid? So <laughs> is it hard for guys? Like, uh, I, I, I... Can I say that we're in a relationship? Or we're not. What can I put out there? <laughs> um, you could. Just, I mean, you could. Can I put your business on blast? I mean, you could say that I'm dating someone. Okay, so Ingrid is dating someone. <laughs> How is it for people who are in relationship or dating you to eat and work out? Do they ever feel like they have to raise to a higher level because of you, or do they order what they want on their plate? And or maybe even though afraid though that you're gonna call their plate low vibration. <laughs> <laughs> Are you at Maestro's like that's low vibration? Uh, that steak is, is low. Is, you're really gonna eat that? <laughs> okay. Um, I will say. I mean, I will say. I I don't feel like I I should control. I don't control what mm. other people eat, but I do feel like your partner should elevate you, mm. and I feel like you know. If I'm just like you said about you, you know your husband, like if if you're sitting across from me and you're eating healthy, yeah, and you're we're about to go work out and your plate looks beige, yep, and you know my plate looks like light, like nutritional, fueling me, then you know maybe the next time we have breakfast, you're gonna change your plate, not because I told you to, but because you're like, oh, I want to feel that good, mm-hmm. or I want to you know, be able to get through this workout too. So I do feel like, um, partners have a way of like elevating them Yeah, and it can either go either way. I, I've had relationships where they're like, oh, I always eat healthy and da, da, da. And I usually get rid of them because like, if we're not, <laughs> you're not going to make me not do it. Yeah. And, and obviously I'm not going to make you do it. Yep. So this is not going to work. And I don't want to hear negative things about my choice. Just like no man wants to hear negative things about his plate. True. So I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't do it, you know, <laughs> but I do feel like you make people sometimes better. And I think that's a good thing when it comes to relationships. Like, you know, um, I may, you know, my partner makes me sometimes think about different things that I would have never, because I'm, sometimes I could be very like 
steadfast, but like he's like, well, what if they were feeling this way? You know, and it gives you a different perspective. Yeah. So it makes you sometimes a little like, oh, okay, I didn't even think about that. Yep. And I think it's the same thing when it comes to like eating. Like, you know, th- this is this is my wheelhouse. Yeah. And, you know, he respects my wheelhouse. For sure. So, th- you know, therefore, you know, he's going li- <laughs> to look li- like if we're working out together, he's going to listen at the form corrections. You know, I've had partners in the past who got really upset at the form corrections, mm. you know, and I was just like, OK, well, you know, just keep doing those squats wrong. Then. Right. <laughs> this is not going to work. Good luck with that, sir. But, <laughs> you know, and like I respect his wheelhouse. So yeah. I think, um, it, I think when it comes down to it, it's like a mutual respect thing. I'm not trying to change you. But if you do one thing better this week or, you know, I'm going to celebrate that with yep. you because you made that good decision and, you know, vice versa. So I think what you're saying, too, that people need to pick up on is like the power of partnership. And if you are disciplined, to, to your point, if you are disciplined, you usually can help your partner be more disciplined or their lack of discipline will influence you, right? <laughs> right? So it's like when you are in relationship with someone, you do have to think about like, dang, if I were to fall victim to your charms <laughs> and your way of being, is that a way of being that I'm comfortable falling victim to? Right. Um, and meaning also to what they partake in, right? So if like they are someone who maybe doesn't have the uh, cleanest lifestyle, if I were to take on yours, would I, would I suffer because of it? If I were to take on the way that you manage money, would I suffer because Mm -hmm. of it? If I were to take on, uh, the way that you handle fidelity, right? Well, like there's all these things. Will I suffer, (laughs) right? The way that you maybe like do your, you know, don't clean the house or your chore. Like, will I suffer because of it? Because oftentimes it will rub off you staying strict or disciplined or true to yourself is a lot harder if you are influenced in partnership, which we usually are. And, um, the, you know, it's why we say that, like, you know, you become the company that you keep. So are you with the clean eater or not? And it's why I made a conscious decision that I would be with somebody who's so super gung ho about health so that when I do fall short, they will be able to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. So literally, if I do eat ratchet, my husband will have me. <laughs> in the gym with him and I'm like oh why Lord Jesus but he will be like no we don't just get to like misbehave there's consequences for this we have to work out we have to work out and me knowing that he will not respect me as a human if I don't I'm like oh fine but I but it is not the most people would be like but you don't want someone who like guilty like that or you don't. And I'm like, no, no, no. He's not guilting me into Coke. He's not guilting me into alcoholism. He's not guilting me. And he's, he is rationalizing with me the importance of something that's actually healthy for me. Right. And I don't think that we do that enough is look at is what they are trying to do when they maybe, con- you know, um, critique our finances or, you know, management of other parts of our lives. Is this actually going to make me a better person if I listen to them? Mm-hmm. Cause if, I don't. <laughs> There's consequences to that, too. So I, I say this so that you guys would be mindful of is this coming from a place of, um, to Ingrid's point, them elevating you, helping you grow? Or is it coming from a place of negativity and them trying to, you know, push you down and make you your well self, your mm-hmm. worst self? And if it is uh, from coming from a great place, a good place, and they have the best intentions for you and it's a healthy habit that you do need to pick up on. Then we need to listen. Mm-hmm. Ingrid, I have a homegirl right now. And she's like, ah, he's he's so organized and he always wants to be on time. And um, he That's wants me saving my money and not spending. <laughs> Sounds like and a I, very sound human. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he's called an adult. <laughs> That's adulting. Yeah. Um, we need to listen to what he's saying. She's like, no, but it's so annoying. And I'm like, it's annoying because you don't like being responsible. Right. So, um, so I, I, I'm using this as an example of um, how you know important our partnership is, but. And sometimes your rigidness, because I, you know me, I like to be on time. You, uh, and uh, 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 the, the partner I'm with <laughs> never is on time. And I get so much anxiety. So I will say sometimes they could make you relax. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I was practiced for so, him for you, right? So like so I prepared you I'll for just him. like let it go. I'm like, okay, you obviously maybe you don't need to be there on 30 minutes ahead of schedule. But I feel you know. like I was the workout and he's the marathon. Like I prepped you for, okay, for that for that Certain marathon. things you have to be on time for. <laughs> 
<laughs> nothing related to my social life i should have to be on time for and i will pay for it if i come to the the five course meal that was already prepared in advance if i come late i will still pay my fee I'm just going to miss out on the first two courses. Uh, I say this because this just happened on Saturday. So <laughs> I realize that there are consequences for my tardiness. But I feel like um, to your point about the flexibility, yes, he, uh, he is helping you with that flexibility. And so there's always some type of like, you know, give and take when it comes to certain things that we do like to keep within our control. And you started this off with saying that um, fitness was the one thing that you felt like in your life you could control. Mm. Uh, what does it say about us when we can't control our health, our wellness? What does that say about us? I mean, to me, it indicates that a, 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 there's a lack of self-love. Mm. Because if that's not, you know, we talk about self-love, self-love, mm -hmm. self-love. It's not just the spa. It's not like <laughs> it's, it's not, not getting going my hair shopping. done. It's all encompassing. Yeah. Like it's going to the doctor It's making sure your tests are OK. It's, yeah. It's you know, it's exercising It's doing something for your heart. Um, Self-love is also, if you, you know, if you have a family is, you know, making sure that you're whole so that you can be a whole person mm -hmm. and a whole being for them. So self-love to me embodies so many different things that we're kind of like missing the boat on. Yeah. Um, self-love means reading a book maybe every, I'm going to say every six months, just because, <laughs> you know, I know it's like a little, a difficult thing. Um, my challenge, I, I try to read one every month at least, but like, you know, self-love is like stepping outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. So you may have a partner who doesn't like to work out and one that does. And now that partner is pushing you up to do a 6 a.m. workout. Mm. And that is outside of your comfort zone. So stepping outside of your comfort zone, you may discover you really like something. Yeah. You just never know. That's a part of self-love. Yeah, that is, that's a part yeah. of self-love. So giving to yourself, giving yourself the chance to like discover new things, giving yourself the chance to be better mm. is all self-love to me. So I would say to that, per I would probably not say to that person because I'm very careful about words. Yeah. And in, in, like in doing this, but um, I would probably make a mental note that, they, they they don't consider themselves to be a high enough priority to take care of themselves. Mm. So on that note, y'all got to start working out and eating clean. <laughs> what she means is <laughs> Get rid love of yourself more. <laughs> that's me. My, that's my approach. I'm like, what she is saying is like, but, but I do, I, but I do appreciate that about you because you are very thoughtful in how you deliver it to your clients. Um, but you operate at a very high level of, consideration you are a considerate person so you're like that with your clients but then you also want it and ask for it in return which i think is also a beautiful thing um understanding that about yourself me on the other hand i'm like talk shit to me because i won't talk shit to you <laughs> like let me have it so that i know i can have my way with you <laughs> two different approaches guys okay two different approaches and everybody is different there are clients that you cannot like I've learned, you, you learn people. Yeah. So, you know, some clients I could be like, this is horrible. What are you doing? Some clients, you know, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Like you, you learn different approaches for different people because mm -hmm. people take things in, in different ways to motivate them yeah. to do something. So I just always keep that in mind because your motivation comes from an extrinsic, like externally or like internally. Mm -hmm. And so it's figuring out what that is for them mm. and then tuning into that. I love that. And I want to be selfish right now and have you tune into me. Um, don't know if you guys know this or if I've shared it yet, but uh, after the baby finally got a breast lift and um, breast reduction. So haven't been able to work out the entire past month. I made a promise to myself though that 2023, like I said, I'm going to be ratchet right now, but 2023, <laughs> I'll be on top of it. Tell me where you would advise me just to start having had come from surgery, um, knowing that I want to tone and tighten and, and lift my butt back and get my body uh, fit curvy again. Where should I start? Um, well, I would make sure she was clear by her doctor. Uh, <laughs> good point. Good point. Because I don't do anything unless they are. Um, and then I would kind of like, um, there are tests that I do with new clients, mm -hmm. our clients that have been gone for a while just to see where they are. Mm. So I would 
do a test on you that you wouldn't know was a test? Like you wouldn't what? know. I, I've, I've done it several times. Oh, okay. Like, and, you, and no one ever notices. <laughs> so basically, I test your strength, and then mm. I test your cardiovascular endurance. So your, your, your strength endurance, um, strength stamina, um, and cardiovascular endurance. Um, so I test all that, see where you are, mm-hmm. and see where we need to kind of like work on, and then go from there. So I would probably start working on like strength endurance. Mm. So how can you sustain a workout? Can you get through three sets of four to five exercises? Like we'll start there and then focus on like taking away, you know, some of the high reps and focus on, you know, just heavy lifting on certain body parts that you're looking to kind of like lift. Um, And just so you guys know, too, like you can't spot train parts. (laughs) (laughs) And if a, if a trainer tells you, if you're like, right oh, there. I need to get rid of this. And a trainer's like, yeah, I can get rid of just that. They, they've lied because that's not how fat works. So it's going to be an overall kind of like fat decrease yeah. and then muscle strengthening in certain areas and using food at certain times to kind of like impact mm. those areas that you want to be bigger. And that's kind of like how the process is supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> He said, forget what they're telling you and what they're trying to sell you, okay? Yeah. It's, it's an Ooh, Ingrid, like waist trainers. Um, oh, God. Do those work? Because I've always worn, uh, what's the one that makes you sweat? Sweet sweat. My girlfriend gave me a sweet sweat band, and I've lived by it. My, my stomach is more sweaty, though, when I wear it. But you don't feel like these get make things work? <laughs> You're like, well, they might endorse me next week. I don't know if I want to um, say. <laughs> I don't care about that. Um, <laughs> I would say the benefit of a waist trainer is I would say that it supports your back mm. when you're doing exercise. I love how you're trying to find the positive. So it's in. like wearing a, a weightlifting belt. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's all, <laughs> folks. That's all she has to say about waist um, trainer. She's like, you. I, and I, I know everybody. Like, Get your ass on the treadmill. Like, well, I've been wearing my waist trainer forever. Doesn't necessarily mean that your results are a product of your waist trainer. Um, sometimes those things are can be dangerous if they're too tight, mm. especially internal organ wise. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, your waist trainer is you holding your stomach in. So, that, <laughs> but, wait, wait, but it is harder for me now. I didn't realize, like, I always hear people talk about uh, the, their the abs, abs after, losing their abs after the baby. Yeah. I will find myself still holding my stomach like I'm pregnant. And because I used to, lean, um, when I was pregnant, I would, my back would hurt. So I would hunch my butt in and like hold my weight in my tummy kind of. And now I find myself doing that to where I'm like, wait, I know better. I should be sucking it in and poking it out. But I forget now, like yeah. literally I will forget how I should be standing because of the baby. Well, you rechange your body to do to do that when you're pregnant. But I need to switch it back. So you got re- yeah, to retrain your body. <laughs> so I'm going to put the waist trainer on so yes. I can remember to second in because I forget now. I, I kid you not. You used to tell people every day, suck it in, poke it out for photos. And now you will find me hunched over, slouched, holding, <laughs> holding as if I'm still pregnant with Princeton. Right. I mean, I, I always tell people, as soon as you walk into the gym, we start training, put in your invisible girdle, mm. you know, put that on. Every time, I always tell clients, every time you take a turn in your car, tighten. So that's an oblique. Ooh. So every time you take a turn, I know there's little things you could do are like, you're just sitting home watching TV, put your feet on the ground and just do like 50 to the right, 50 to the left. Like there's so many different ways you can still, you can always engage the core. Yes. I love it. And, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there because I see a lot of women doing weighted ab exercises. No. Which is fine. No, no. It depends on what you want. So, like, when you add weights to abdominal exercises, you're thickening the abdominal wall, Mm. right? So that's the difference between the square, which you'll see, like, Paige Hathaway, and I think her body is banging, but but she's... Beautiful woman, but her stomach is boxing. Right. Or the, the curve line. So if you want the curves, drop the weights. If you don't, then keep, and by the way, I think they're both gorgeous. I'm square, which is, you know, I don't, I don't like most, um, super athletic girls are. Yeah. Um, I want the curve though. But if you want the curve, the then, then want drop, the, then drop the weights. I right. want the cinch. Right. Yeah. Okay. So no weights for Just me then. Just a little. 
But like weight training, I can do. You're just saying don't put weights on no my abs. No weighted abs. Yeah, so they're just going to thicken. Because yeah. I got to get my core together. Okay, I'll be hitting you up for weekend extravaganzas and... Like, well, you know what I know what I'm doing right now? I have um I'm holding Princeton in the shower while I bathe him and squatting with him in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you could do that outside of the shower as well. <laughs> you guys, I know this sounds crazy. First of all, you don't even need to go to any stairs. I I took the stairs up here. Oh yeah, we have stairs. Why aren't you going up and down those stairs with Princeton? Two at a time. Uh What's an excuse that I can come up with right now? I mean. Oh, I can't come up with an excuse. Right. <laughs> or without him. But like, that's like a real amazing workout. Shay built those for me because I was complaining that I always have to go to Santa Monica stairs. So he went and put stairs. He was like, now what's your excuse? See? A supportive <laughs> partner. I was like, um, I'm going to sweat my hair out. And he's like, here's a hair wrap. Now what's your excuse? Sounds like a very supportive partner. Yeah, very much that. Very I'm like, supportive. damn it. That's the kind of, that's the kind of partner. I, that's what I like. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I get, I it, I get it. it. I get it. I get it. No, um, I, I appreciate him and adore him. And I uh, love you as well. I want people to be able to sign up for your services. If they are kind of like me and they struggle, right? With um, the motivation or the discipline when it comes to staying consistent and on top of their health, they may need assistance from you right yeah. they may need that accountability um i don't want them to struggle with the low vibrational plate the way that i do which is why i call in for the big dogs um let everybody know where they can find you where they can sign up for your uh services and program are you still doing uh your uh nine weeks is sexy what was it six, uh, six weeks is six sexy. Weeks oh yeah it's sexy. quicker than we nine. have six weeks. Weeks. features a I'm in there. Lady. I'm yes, in there. That was spicy. Oh, yeah. that was before the that baby. Was right before. But like while we were taping or you were coming up with that plan, I think I got pregnant yeah. even because all of a sudden my workout was a little slow and you're like, what's going on here? Oh, yeah. We were filming that. Day yeah. And I was like, you're off. Yeah. yeah. I just thought I had a low vibrational plate earlier, but really <laughs> I had a baby inside me. Who would have thought? She's exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I was preggers. <laughs> but yes, uh, your girl Spicy makes a cameo in there. Six Weeks is Sexy. So um, you guys definitely want to get that. But let everybody know the websites, yeah. um, pages that they can find you, um, projects that you have, and your book too. All right, so you can find me at Ingrid S. Clay on Instagram, on Facebook. My website is IngridSClay.com. Um, I have my Six Weeks to Sexy ebook. And let me just say, Six Weeks to Sexy is not for beginners. Mm, you know, it's that's hard. more like a inter- yeah, yeah. I usually, it's more like I could not do six weeks of sexy right now. I have to get back to that. Yeah, I would say six weeks is more of a intermediate to advanced. Yeah, but it does come with like a meal plan. So good though. So it's all encompassing. Um, and then I also have my kind of like mindfulness ebook that has like um, it's thirty days. It's a thirty day reset. So it has like plant based meals in it it includes my plant-based cookbook and it includes like 30 days of mindfulness so each each day you get like kind of like a reading it tells you something to do and I address like cravings and things like that in there love 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 um and then I also have like my plant-based ebook I have a book book which is the science of hit where I walk you through what your body is actually doing during a HIT training and why HIT is important and why you shouldn't overtrain in HIT. Because mm. um, a lot of people will do like HIT classes, running on treadmills five times, seven times a week, which is absolutely Ooh. insanity. Yeah. Um, if you're doing a true real HIT workout, it should only be two to three times a week at most. And you should supplement that with strength. And then... Um, I am also now on the center platform with Chris Hemsworth. Who? I didn't hear that part. Who? <laughs> what? What? With Mr. Hemsworth. And um, I just did a... Um, For those of you who may not recognize that name, which you should, uh, <laughs> Thor. Okay? Marvel Comics Thor. Thank you very much. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just did um, one of his workouts. I did one of his workouts in Shape Magazine that just came out a couple of days ago. Ooh, ooh, so, ooh, ooh. Uh, 
busy. Very, I love it. Very busy. Yes. Uh, I My friend is just so important. <laughs> uh, I'm just so grateful when she's able to squeeze me in. Um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, though. I really do Thanks appreciate you me. always being willing to help us spice our lives. You guys can always play with my Twitter. Stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to the SpicyLife.com. Click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. Uh, schedule a free consultation so that I can help you with your love life if you need coaching in that area for 2023. You ain't got to be alone. And you also can be sexy if you use Ingrid. All right. There you guys have it. Win-win. You have just been spiced. <laughs> the spice.